Welcome to Read This Next with Laura and Nicole from the Thunder Bay Public Library. This week we are once again pulling one from out of the the bottom of our drawer. Uh, we're talking <laughs> <laughs> what? We're talking about like mysteries, which we've had planned since November 2020. <laughs> <laughs> what happens is we have like a running list of themes, which is why we always say that if you have ideas that you can send them to us and we will add them to our list of, of theme ideas. And sometimes ones just keep getting like pushed back down the list because other ones for whatever reason interest we get us excited. more day. <laughs> we get excited. Not that we're not excited about mysteries, mm. but it was kind of a a toughish topic because it was like, how narrow should we go? Should we do like specifically detectives? Should we do like procedurals? And what mm -hmm. we came up to in the end is like just a grab bag of mysteries. Bag. All different. <laughs> yes, all different kinds of stuff. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you can't decide, don't decide. <laughs> don't decide and yeah. just leave it wide open. Yeah. So, yeah. So these are just mysteries of various kinds. Mm -hmm. All right. I will start then. Um, so we are first going to talk about Sadie by Courtney Summers, a missing girl on a journey of revenge, a serial like podcast following the clues she's left behind and an ending you won't be able to stop talking about. Sadie hasn't had an easy life. Growing up on her own, she's been raising her sister Maddie in an isolated small town, trying her best to provide a normal life and keeps her head above the keep their heads above the water. But when Maddie is found dead, Sadie's entire world crumbles. After a somewhat botched police investigation, Sadie is determined to bring her sister's killer to justice and hits the road, following a few meager clues to find him. When met what <laughs> When Mest McQuay, when West McRae, a radio personality working on a segment about small forgotten towns in America, overhears Sadie's story at a local gas station, he becomes obsessed with finding the missing girl. He starts his own podcast as he tracks Sadie's journey, trying to figure out what's happening and hoping to find her before it's too late. Uh, Courtney Summers has written the breakout book of her career. Sadie is propulsive and harrowing and will keep you riveted until the last page. So is this man making a podcast about her podcast? I think so. Cool. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, it fits in really well, obviously, with like all the true crime podcasts and TV shows and everything that lots of people are interested in. Mm -hmm. um, and also, like, I, I haven't read this one, so I'm not sure, but it also sounds a little bit like looking at the exploitive nature of some of these true crime podcasts yeah. where or things where they don't actually talk to you know the surviving relatives involved um there's some pretty distasteful stuff that's been done there was that one um i don't know if you heard about it but it was like it was called where is richard simmons or what happened to richard simmons did you hear about this i'm not super into true crime so no i i i'm not really either but i am I am pretty tapped into the podcast world. Anyway, wow. so this was a little... <laughs> one of us has to be. <laughs> so it was, this was a little while ago though, but someone was like, I'm going to do a podcast about what happened to Richard Simmons. Like the, you know, the like athletic dancing guy, you know who I'm talking about. Oh anyway, yeah. And it was like, he's fine. And just like, didn't want to be in the public eye anymore. But this guy was like, it's a mystery. No, not really a mystery. He just kind of wanted to be left alone. And you're not so, respecting his wishes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was a little, like, that was pretty ethically questionable. Anyway, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure if they're taking that angle with this, but um, it sounds really interesting. It sounds like there's lots of different ways, reasons it could appeal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But very, uh, it'll be cool to see it from two different perspectives, too. Yes, indeed. Okay, let's see if I can find the right window. Yay, I did it. <laughs> okay, I have a bad habit of having too many tabs open. Same. <laughs> okay, so our next one um, is actually a book two in a series. We have both. Um, so this book two just came out. Um, they both had quite good reviews. I checked. So <laughs> This, this particular title is called Carolina and the Torn Curtain, um, and it is by Marila 
I, I can't even try, I'm afraid. It is, you're just gonna have to look it up on off the shelf um, or else just search by the title of the book and you will find it, Carolina with a K. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, Nicole will show the beautiful cover as well, which is quite nice. It is. Um, yeah. Okay. So when amateur sleuth and cunning socialite Sophia's beloved maid goes missing, she dives deep into Krakow's web of crime with only her trusted cook for company. Oh, right. <laughs> 1895. <laughs> Sophia and her maid Francesca have their hands full organizing Easter festivities, especially with the household short one servant. Where has the capable Carolina disappeared to? Shortly after, Sophia hears that the body of a young woman, violated and stabbed, has washed up on the bank of the River Vistula. Domestic work can wait. Sophia must go investigate. Shockingly, the body turns out to be none other than Carolina. Working with the police, Sophia's investigations take her deep into the city's underbelly, a far cry from the socialites Krakow she's familiar with. Desperate to unearth what happened to Carolina, though she pushes her prejudice aside, immersing herself among prostitutes, gangsters, and duplicitous politicians <laughs> to unravel a twisted tale of love and deceit. Wow. That kind of sounds like, like um, the cozy mysteries that are about the, the women who really should have no experience in it or like have so much going on that they shouldn't be able to solve a mystery. But yes. in like... A different time period she's like i'm a rich social elite uh elite person and i'm gonna solve this mystery here yeah. i go here Never i go before <laughs> but that sounds and, cool okay here's the thing it does sound cool and i was excited about it but i'm gonna tell you guys so that you're not don't find this out later and feel like we led you astray okay the name of the author's name is a female name ghost written or I guess if we're going to be a little maybe he doesn't have to say ghost written but it's a pseudonym for two dudes oh right who were like we're gonna write a feminist novel about this woman two how dudes. can we break into the market <laughs> right and I like it, it is it is a thing right now that like women's mysteries are so popular there are quite a few men which is not usually the way it goes who are writing under like women's names anyway so I found that out and I almost reconsidered suggesting it but it does still sound quite fun it does and it does and it does say in the description <laughs> that it's Agatha Christie-esque and you know <laughs> I am about those gotta love that I have, to, I have to check it out so yeah two books I'm assuming it's probably gonna be an ongoing series if they are popular uh yeah sounded like an interesting setting you know not one I'm familiar with certainly mm -hmm. historical and mystery a little bit of Mixing everything yeah yeah uh, the next one is a study in Charlotte, which is uh, part of the Charlotte Holmes series by Brittany Cavallaro. Um, obviously a Sherlock Holmes <laughs> adaptation slash reimagining. Um, okay, the last thing Jamie Watson wants wants is a rugby scholarship to Sharonford, a Connecticut prep school just an hour away from his estranged father. But that's not the only complication. Sharingford is also home to Charlotte Holmes, the famous detective's great, 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 great granddaughter, who has inherited uh, not only Sherlock's genius, but also his volatile temperament. From everything Jamie has heard about Charlotte, it seems safer to admire her from afar. From the moment they meet, there's a tense energy between them, and they seem more destined to be rivals than anything else. But when a Sharingford student dies among under su suspicious circumstances, ripped straight from the most terrifying of the Sherlock Holmes stories, Jamie can no longer afford to keep his distance. Jamie and Charlotte are being framed for murder, and only Charlotte can clear their names. Oh, no. Yeah, but danger is mounting and nowhere is safe, and the only people they can trust is each other. That sounds like a... Mm -hmm. Enemies to lovers! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it does. I think there's yeah. four books in that series. Okay, cool. Might be it's... Making it up. I think it's four. Might even be a trilogy. I don't know, but it's multiples. I love it. Yeah. Um, I feel like I like though knowing that the fact that like so only some of Sherlock Holmes is allowed to is in the public domain, so you can write based off of it. And yeah. I don't know if you heard about Enola Holmes. Um the the netflix show got like yeah dude because sherlock holmes is too nice because like one of the defining characteristics are the ones in public domain he's like not a nice guy <laughs> yeah 
So they're like, he's got a volatile temperament. I'm like, can't refer to his nice temperament. <laughs> no. Yeah. Like, no, he's uh, actually a, not a very nice man to be around. Mm -mm. Like, okay. Yeah, that's so interesting. <laughs> but that sounds, I mean, adaptations are always cool, but... Um, I'm curious. It's also cool, kind of, kind of, kind of, because it's a a lady and a man being her sidekick. So, yes, mixing it up that way. Mm -hmm. This was one of I don't know. I want to say five, six years ago, maybe even a bit more. There was like this whole flurry of Sherlock Holmes adaptations, um, and a, quite a few of them kind of sank with a bunch of a trace. This one stuck around. I think it's a little bit above the rest in terms of the mysteries and the writing. It, uh, the, and the cover holds up. <laughs> it does, holds up. does hold up. <laughs> okay. Next one is, ooh, this one is one of mine. And <laughs> I came across this title. Um, if you look up in our archives, we recently did a closed circle mystery, limited cast of characters, mysteries. Um, and I came across this title when researching for that one and had it on hold for a long time because this book is extremely popular and it's like brand new. <laughs> so I will recommend it. And then you may have to find yourself also be on the hold list, but I think after it will Laura, <laughs> after me, I actually have it right now, finally. So <laughs> Anyway, so this is the book. It's called The Sanatorium. It's by Sarah Pierce. And uh, <laughs> here's the, the description. Half hidden by forest and overshadowed by threatening peaks, Les Sommet has always been a sinister place. Long plagued by troubling rumors, the former abandoned sanatorium has since been renovated into a five-star minimalist hotel. Like, oh, what a delight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a creepy <laughs> sanatorium. And now it's a fancy hotel. All mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> An imposing, isolated getaway spot high up in the Swiss Alps is the last place Ellen Warner wants to be. But Ellen's taken time off from her job as a detective, so when her estranged brother Isaac and his fiancée Laura invite her to celebrate their engagement at the hotel, Ellen really has no reason not to accept. Arriving in the midst of a threatening storm, see, of course. here's all the elements of the closed circle, right? <laughs> isolated location, and then there has to be something that cuts everybody off, usually they a storm. Yeah. Something's happening. Okay. Ellen immediately feels on edge. There's something about the hotel that makes her nervous. Maybe it was because it was a creepy sanatorium. I don't know if that's a big mystery. Could be. Anyway. <laughs> And when they wake the following morning to discover Laura's missing, Ellen must trust her instincts if they hope to find her. With the storm closing off all access to the hotel, check, the longer Laura stays missing, the more the remaining guests start to panic. Ellen is under pressure to find Laura, but no one has realized yet that another woman has gone missing. And oh, she's no. the only one who could have warned them just how much danger they all are in. Dot, dot, dot. Ooh, that sounds very gripping. Gripping. Yes. Yep. So, um, sounds great. I wonder how uh, the sanatorium <laughs> aspect is going to play in or if they just like picked that. I don't know. Right. That's interesting. Whether yeah. there's something like, I don't know, someone who works in the hotel is a former patient that or something be. or yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to play a role. Mm -hmm. That would actually be a little bit different because many of the other ones, many of the other closed circle mysteries are just like the location is just kind of picked because it's a place that they can be isolated, not because features of the location play into the mystery. Yeah. But you're probably, I feel like it would be a waste if it didn't have some role other than just being like, oh, it's kind of creepy. Oh, because it's spooky. an old sanatorium. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. spooky. <laughs> it's spooky. <laughs> it's spooky. <laughs> Although <laughs> my son now says stuff is creepy. That's oh, his thing. it's creepy. Creepy. Oh, we've moved on. We've it's moved creepy. on from spooky. My nephew said spooky. My son says creepy when he saw like some netting, like super fun climbing netting on a jungle gym. And he was yeah. like giant spider. Creepy. <laughs> Have you been watching literally any fantasy movie with him? Because they all got giant spiders. I, they do have giant spiders. No, we just watch stuff like Paw Patrol. And even they have like, <laughs> a, like a character who's afraid of spiders. And like Gavin to learn spiders behavior. normally, but this one too big, too That's, big a spider, I guess. He's right to fear creepy. that size of a spider creepy. that could make that. So I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> All right. Uh, this next one is The Amateurs, part of The Amateurs uh, series by Sarah Shepard. Y'all may know her from Pretty Little Liars. I keep wanting to say Easy A because, like, that's the character. That is, <laughs> right. like, a. a is the, yes. Yeah. Not Easy mm -hmm. A. No, um, that's something else. Yeah, and she clearly is very successful because that book series was crazy long. So here we are. Um, yeah. I need some answers about my sister. Help. Five years ago, high school senior Helena Kelly disappeared from her backyard in Dexby, Connecticut, never to be heard from again. Her family was left without any answers and without any idea who killed Helena or why. So when 18-year-old Seneca Frazier sees a desperate post on the case not closed message board, she knows it's time to change that. Helena's high profile disappearance is the one that originally got Seneca addicted to true crime. It's the reason she's a member of the site in the first place. Determined to get to the bottom of the mystery, she agrees to sp uh, spend spring break in Connecticut working on the case with Maddie Wright, her best friend from case not closed. However, the moment she steps off the train, things start to go wrong. Maddie's, Maddie's nothing like she expected, and Helena's sister, Erin, doesn't seem to want to help after all. Plus, Seneca has a secret of her own, one that could derail the investigation if she's not careful. Alongside Brett, another super user from the site, they slowly begin to unravel the secrets Helena kept in the weeks before her disappearance. But the killer is watching and determined to make sure the case stays cold. Wow. Yeah, so that's a YA. Yeah, has some real similarities to Sadie. Yeah. Clearly, these authors are writing that like true crime serial, which again, several years back now. But to be fair, both of those books, I think, are a little bit older. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, prompted at the time that came up. The whole like people getting on message boards and trying to solve mysteries together definitely yeah. a thing that people do and sometimes are even successful at so this next one is interesting to me because the the um the plot reminds me of a story that I know I've heard a couple of times but it's been from kind of the other direction so let me I'll tell you what the the plot is and I'll explain what I mean okay so okay. this one is called call me Elizabeth Lark and it's by Melissa Colasanti Okay, so our little like opening blurb. Your daughter went missing 20 years ago. Now she's finally back. You thought she had returned a few times in the past and your husband tells her she's not the one, but you feel it in your bones. Now, what will you do to keep her home? Okay. 20 years ago, Myra Barkley's daughter disappeared from the rocky beach across from the family inn off the Oregon coast. Ever since, Myra has waited at the front desk for her child to come home. One rainy afternoon, the miracle happens. Her missing daughter, now 28 years old with a child of her own, walks in the door. Elizabeth Lark is on the run with her son. She's just killed her abusive husband and needs a place to hide. Against her better judgment, she heads to her hometown and stops at the Barkley Inn. When the innkeeper insists that Elizabeth is her long lost daughter, the opportunity for a new life, and more importantly, the safety of her child, is too much for Elizabeth to pass up. But she knows that she isn't the Barclays' daughter, and the more deeply intertwined she becomes with the family, the harder it becomes to confess the truth. Except the Barclay girl didn't just disappear on her own. As the news spreads across the small town that the Barclay girl has returned, Elizabeth suddenly comes into the limelight in a dangerous way, and the culprit behind the disappearance those 20 years ago is back to finish the job. So my... My immediate thought is the person who's finishing the job would have known if they had finished the job. You'd think so. Okay. You'd think so. I'll let that lie. <laughs> but there's presumably more things going on. But it's Clearly. interesting because I feel like there has been a couple YA books um, specifically that are about that have been about, you know, oh, my sister was kidnapped and now she's back and I'm not sure if she is my sister or not. Mm -hmm. Like I've read more than one of those, definitely. Um, and there was that famous story of, he was actually like an adult who pretended to be like a miss, like really horrible exploiting a family. Oh, this like is real life. Family. Yeah, this was real life yeah, and oh. pretended to be a missing child, you know, but the, so anyway, so it's interesting. I haven't read it from where the person kind of gets sucked into this, this situation 
where they're pretending, but they, you know, they weren't, she wasn't trying to make that happen. It's a little bit different from the ones who are like trying to ingratiate themselves and mm-hmm. exploit the family for whatever reason. Sounds interesting. It does. It sounds like there's a lot more, it, like, because it's not sinister, it, her, like her intentions aren't sinister. It's going to be interesting yeah. to see how her motives play out in the, in and- that story. <laughs> And that little like blurb at the beginning with, with the mother being like, like, what would you do to keep her? It's like, could that turn sinister that she won't let this woman leave? Or could it be a good thing if there's someone out to get her? The mother's like, I'm going to stand take, down. Yeah, you'll be here. <laughs> I am not letting anybody get to you. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> I got anyway, you. <laughs> interesting. And that's another like new adult one, like just came out this year, I think. Nice. Okay. And that's all of our, that's all of our highlights. Now we can go into our recommendations. Our recommendations. Okay. So this one is, I wouldn't, okay. It's not, not a mystery, but like the first (laughs) few are mysteries because the, the character in this is a, a part-time private investigator, a full-time grim reaper. (laughs) <laughs> so she sees dead people and like helps them pass on. So this book is called right. First Grave on the Right by um, <laughs> Dorinda Jones. And uh, it's a series. It's got 13 in the series because, you know, creepy numbers. Uh, creepy. 13, sure. Yep. And um, so the first few are a little <laughs> bit more. They have a bit more of like the p- private in- investigating portion in it. But as the series goes on, it kind of gets like, more supernatural heavy so if that's you know keep that in mind if you're reading the series but what i will tell you and i will describe it uh actually i'll describe it first okay as i said charlie davidson is a part-time private investigator and a full-time grim reaper meaning she sees dead people really and it's her job to convince them to go into the light but when these very dead people have died under less than ideal circumstances like murder sometimes they want charlie to bring the bad guys to justice complicating matters are the intensely hot dreams she's been having about an entity who has been following her her whole life what's up with that um (laughs) where was i uh in fact he might not be no where was i uh, oh, following her, and it turns about out this entity. I know, and it turns <laughs> out he might. <laughs> it turns out he might not be dead after all. In fact, he might be something else entirely. But what does he want with Charlie, and why can't she seem to resist him? And what does she have to lose by giving in? With scorching hot tensions and high octane humor, first grave on the right is your signpost for sp- uh, to sit paranormal suspense of the highest order so it is a little bit spicy but not that much so it's very good um this book got me out of a five-year reading drought (laughs) like i yeah i had not read i went through university and you know i'm an english major so are you so we read so many books and then i don't know about you but it wasn't fun anymore So I just stopped reading. Uh, One of the other librarians who work at TBPL, Ruth, she was like, hey, let me put some books on hold for you. I'll just pick one and you can like read it. And I read it and I devoured it. And then I just kept reading the entire series. I read them so fast and it was finally what got me out of my like, I hate reading phase. but it's, it's really good. It's the character, Charlie, she's very like spunky and she's very sarcastic and funny. And she's got a very close relationship with like her uncle and she's, but she's not, um, she's not the kind of uh, investigator. Well, it's, she's a classic investigator where she's like been ostracized her entire life because she sure. sees dead people. So um, <laughs> it's kind of cool. And it's a, it's a neat connection between her being a grim reaper and, um, uh you know it's good stuff i can't really complain the later stuff gets a little bit like i said more supernatural heavy but perfection did you you read um any of the charlene harris suki stackhouse books i didn't but i have heard a lot of people compare the two um but i've also heard that some people don't like the main character in this series compared to that one so Hmm. yeah just 
sound if you if you ever tried out any of those Suki stack house this sounds like it might be tick some of the similar, similar boxes yes maybe I should try that one next <laughs> maybe you should I read a bunch of them they were just like light fluffy fun little sometimes you just that's want the best sometimes that's all you want right yeah okay right. very good Last. 10 out of 10. I the, will say it strong review yeah yeah okay all right last one my highlight um this is a book <laughs> to creep out all the parents <laughs> um I think I maybe read it while I was pregnant <laughs> I was <laughs> like I, don't know if I should be reading this <laughs> Um, the book's called The Chain. It's by Adrian McKinty. And uh, okay, here's the description. <laughs> Ooh, this is already <laughs> creepy to me. It just is. It's something parents do every morning. Rachel Klein drops her daughter off at the bus stop and heads into her day. But a cell phone call from an unknown number changes everything. It's a woman on the line informing her that she has Kylie, it's Rachel's daughter, bound and gagged in her back seat. And the only way Rachel will see her again is to follow her instructions exactly, pay a ransom, and find another child to abduct. This is no ordinary kidnapping. The caller is a mother herself whose son has been taken. And if Rachel doesn't do as she's told, the boy will die. It's basically a chain letter child kidnapping. There's a movie very similar to that with like murders, but keep going. You are not the first and you won't be the last. Rachel is now part of The Chain, an unending and ingenious scheme that turns victims into criminals and is making someone else very rich in the process. The rules are simple. The moral challenge is impossible. Find the money fast, find your victim, and then commit a horrible act you'd have thought yourself incapable of just 24 hours ago. But what the masterminds behind The Chain know is that parents will do anything for their children. It turns out that kidnapping is only the beginning. Oh my gosh, that sounds that's so interesting it, it sounds so creepy but very creepy very wow creepy. yes and it moves really really fast like there's all these deadlines right like you have to have the money by this and you have to commit yeah. your kidnapping by this or whatever so it's super propulsive thriller and I will say if you're like this sounds horrible I don't know if I could handle it I will say there is a satisfying ending okay so I hope so. <laughs> yes, I'm not, you know, obviously no further spoilers, but that it's not like you reach the end and you're like, ah, no, there's, um, you know, it is, it is a mystery of like the, the, the kidnapping's not really the mystery, right? If you find out who did the kidnapping, like, great, you get your kid back. But like the, the mystery is who was running this and why mm -hmm. and how, right? So that's what the book is about, basically, like on the one hand, trying to do what they need to do. The woman's trying to do what she needs to do to keep her child safe and then at the same time trying to like figure out where stop this is all coming chain. from yeah to stop the chain wow yeah. and you so read that while my... pregnant <laughs> i think so i'd have to check the date it was either pregnant or while he was really little <laughs> amazing timing <laughs> you're like let's start it off with fear <laughs> I mean, there's so many things you write about all the time as a new parent. What's one more? There you go. There you go. It's like reading uh, or watching Taken right before your daughter is going to go on a trip. My mom did that. She watched what? She watched Taken. Oh. Ooh, yeah. As yeah. I was like, I think a few weeks before I was going to Europe or something. And she was just like, don't talk to anybody. And I was like, "It's I'm going. So bye. <laughs> but not a good decision. <laughs> anyways yeah. that right. sounds really that, good sorry that wraps us up no hey it is it was good i enjoyed it mm -hmm. cathartic yeah uh as yeah. you're saying though that wraps us up um this is your reminder that this is the third last episode before our summer break we have eight weeks mm -hmm. off and then we'll be back after that eight weeks so the last time you hear us you'll hear if you're on uh, if you're listening on the podcast, we're going to keep posting old ones because they're still not on the podcast platform. So mm -hmm. follow along and then you can just jump right back into it when we come back. You won't miss a thing. But um, that being said, uh, make sure to like, follow, subscribe, rate us on any podcast platform. And uh, we would love to hear from you guys. Make sure you check out our notes, tbplofftheshelf.com. And we will see you all next time.